Hey YouTube, this is Ed from practicalnetworking.net. This video will teach you ARP in less than five minutes. Let's get started. Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, is a mapping of a Layer 3 address to a Layer 2 address. In our world, this typically takes the form of an IP address to a MAC address. When performing ARP, the IP address is known and the MAC address is what you are trying to discover. So you could remember ARP as a mapping of a known IP address to an unknown MAC address. We're going to show you how ARP works by looking at host B's ARP table as it tries to communicate with the other hosts in this topology. We will start with host B trying to speak to host A. Host B already knows host A's IP address. Maybe someone issued a ping to the IP address 10.3.3.11. Maybe host B acquired the IP address from DNS. Either way, the IP address is known and the MAC address is unknown. That is what ARP will help us resolve. Host B will send an ARP request. The ARP request is essentially a question which asks, if there is someone out there with the IP address 10.3.3.11, please send me your MAC. Host B also provides its own MAC address in the request. The ARP request is sent as a broadcast to everyone on the local LAN, which means everyone on the network will receive it. The router will inspect the contents of the ARP request and notice it is not for the router's IP address, so the router will silently discard the packet. Host A will inspect the content and realize the request is intended for its own IP address. Host A will process the packet and generate an ARP response. The ARP response contains the IP to MAC mapping that host B was inquiring about. The ARP response will be sent unicast back to host B, and once it arrives, host B can update its ARP table with the MAC address of the IP 10.3.3.11. So, a quick summary. When host B was trying to speak to host A, the ARP request was for host A's IP address. We can learn from this that when the destination is on the same network, the ARP will be for the destination IP address itself. Let's now take a look at how it is different when host B is trying to speak to host D. Host D is on a foreign network, which means to reach host D, we will have to use the router. Specifically, we will have to use the router's IP address. Host B knows the router's IP address because it is configured with a default gateway. And this is the IP address that ARP will try and resolve. The lesson we can learn from this is that when you're trying to speak to a destination on a foreign network, ARP will be for the default gateway. Host B will send an ARP request. Just like before, the ARP request essentially asks, if there is someone out there with the IP 10.3.3.99, please send me your MAC. Host B will also include its own MAC address in the request. As before, the ARP request is sent as a broadcast frame to everybody on the local network. Host A will receive it and discard it, realizing it's not for its own IP address. The router will look and realize it is for its own IP address, so it'll process the packet and generate an ARP response. The ARP response will include the mapping that host B was trying to discover, namely that the IP address 10.3.3.99 maps the MAC address that ends in 9999. This response will be sent unicast directly back to host B, which will update its ARP table with the mapping for its default gateway. Now, anytime host B wants to speak to host D or any other host in a foreign network, it'll use the ARP mapping for its default gateway to get the packet to the router. There you have it. That is how traditional ARP works. But there are different iterations of the address resolution protocol that exist. For example, gratuitous ARP, proxy ARP, or ARP probe and responses. For a deeper dive into traditional ARP or any of the other iterations of ARP, check out the ARP article series at practicalnetworking.net by visiting pracnet.net slash ARP in your browser. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button and please share it on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. If I get a thousand likes, I'll make another five minute video on the topic of your choosing. Please make suggestions in the comments below.